Welcome back to Got Wire. Today I'm going to do a video on how to add a, a WireGuard a VPN client to your Barrel. Let's see here. GLINET um, AX travel router or, you know, router. Um, but the first thing you want to do is connect to it either via Wi Fi or hardwired. I got mine hardwired. And then open up your web browser and type in 192.168.8.1. Uh, and that's the IP address of the router by default. Um, you log into it with your password, and then you click on VPN on the left, and then you click on WireGuard Client. And this is one that I already set up, or, um, but I'm not going to show it because it's got my WAN IP address. Um, but you would click on New Group, name it whatever you want, it doesn't matter. VPN, and then hit the check mark. And then what you do is manually add configuration. And then you get this and you're like, what the hell? What is this? It's just blank. What the fuck do I do with this? Um, normally, uh, you type out everything, but typing out everything is a pain in the ass. Because if you get one thing spelled wrong, it doesn't work. Um, but first thing I do is name it. Um, you can name it whatever you want. Uh, VPN. And then if you click on item mode up here. Um, it gives you boxes you can fill in, which is a little bit easier. Um, but what you need now is a private key and you need a public key. Um, and normally one of these would be generated from this client, but for some reason on this router, it doesn't generate any keys. Um, so the easiest way I found to generate keys for this is I Google searched uh, WireGuard install and I clicked on installation you pick your operating system and download it. And then once it's downloaded, you click on um, whatever icon it popped up uh, on your computer. And then you click down here, the arrow. And then I believe it's uh, manually add tunnel or something manually. It's the bottom option. And then this pops up. And you don't have to name it, um, but this is what you need. Public key and private key. Now... Once you get these two keys, you know, once these pop up, open up your VPN router, not VPN, uh, well, it is VPN, but uh, open up PFSense. And up top, you click on VPN, and then click on WireGuard. And then you go to your peer. That's the first thing you want to make is a peer. You can already see I already made one for my travel router. Um, but you click on Add Peer. Uh, make sure that's enabled. Uh, tunnel. Pick your VPN tunnel you want to use. Description. You can name it whatever you want. I already made mine. I'm going to name it YouTube. I'll leave that dynamic because that means you connect the different IP addresses as you're moving from hotel to hotel and you're know, traveling. Uh, keep alive. You leave blank. And then public key. This is what you need to enter in from your client. But in this case, your client doesn't give you a public key. And you're like, what the hell? So that's where we go to this, and we get the public key from the WireGuard software. And these two keys match together, um, so that's why you have to generate them. So you copy that key, go back here, and you paste it. And then uh, pre-shared key, key, you don't need to use that unless you want it more secure. Um, you can generate that, and if you click on generate, you can click on copy, and then you go back to your router, and it's here at the bottom. You can click on use pre-shared key and you just paste it in there. Um, but for simplification, we're just gonna leave that turned off. We're not gonna do that. But anyways, once you get the public key entered in here, you go down here and allowed subnet or host. This is the IP range that you set up when you made WireGuard, when you set it up in PFSense. Uh, mine is 10.0.0 and you can see my other IP addresses down there. Uh, we'll use .8 just for laughter. And then a slash on this one, it's going to be a slash 32, which is up here. And then you can name that you can describe it if you want, or you can leave it blank. And then what you do, this is all you need for PFSense uh, to enter in. You hit save, peer, and then you click on apply changes. And then once that loads, you click on tunnels, and then you want to copy your public key. You hit edit up here and then the public key is right there. You just hit copy. And then once you get that copied, you go back to your router, 
You go down here to peer, peers PF sense. You type in that public key or you just paste it. This isn't my actual public key, so. Um, you just copy that public key from tunnels here and then you paste it right here. Uh, endpoint is your WAN IP address of your actual PF sense. And the way you get that is uh, you click on PF Sense, and it's right here on the right hand side. I ain't gonna show you mine, um, but I'm, for this demonstration, I'm just gonna type in a random WAN IP address 23.114.1. What you can copy and paste this 1851234. And then what you need is you hit two colons and then you need the um, the port of WireGuard and I just use the default port. Um, most YouTube tutorials use the default port but type in whatever port you made when you set up WireGuard uh, but the default port 51820. Uh, keep alive you can leave blank and then allowed IP addresses. Um, I just did 0.0.0 .0. that means it can talk to any of the IP addresses that I have on PFSense. Um, because I'm the only one that's going to be using it. Now, if you have an employee that you only want to have access to a certain VLAN, um, you can just type in you know, that VLAN's IP address in your home network. But I'm just going to do 0 .0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0 .0, .0, and that'll give you access to everything. And that's all you need for peer. Now, for interface, um, your IPv4 address this is what you typed in when you made the peer. And in this case, we typed in 10.0.0.8 slash. Now in PFSense, it's a slash 32, but on here, it's a slash 24. So 10.0.0.8 slash 24. Now this IP address will change depending on how you set up your WireGuard um, instance and PFSense. So type in whatever IP address you used, but just do slash 24. And then the private key that we get from here, private key. This goes, the top one goes into PFSense. This one, bottom one, goes into your router. So you copy this key here. And then you paste it. And then listening port, we don't need anything. It's optional. DNS. Um, you can use whatever DNS server you want. I use 1.1.1. Um, but you could use the, um, the IP address of your router, your PFSense router. Um, I tried that. I haven't gotten it to work. So I just use 1.1.1. I think it's Cloud Failure's DNS. Um, you could use Google's DNS. Um, but anyways, after you enter that in, you hit apply. And then you go back to PFSense. Make sure you hit apply changes up here in the top right. And in that instance, um, it should work for you. You click here, you click on start. Now, um, once you hit start, if you get a green check mark, that means it connected. And then you click on VPN dashboard. And if you see a TX and a RX, if both of them show traffic, normally that means it's working. Uh, mine took a couple seconds for it to be able to let me load pages, but it did work. Um, if you only see one or the other, like if you only see TX and you don't see RX or vice versa, that means something's wrong. You probably got the keys messed up here. Now when I hit edit, um, it just gives me this and it doesn't have the, the easier looking style that we had before. Um, but if you wanted the style that we had before, you just click on VPN dashboard and click on your VPN and you can hit edit and it'll give you, oh, there it is. Yeah, item mode. You can do it from there too. Brain fart. <laughs> but anyways, you hit item mode and it'll show you like how we've been entering, entering it in, but you can also uh, mess with it from text mode here. But if it doesn't connect, it's something with the keys, most likely, as long as you get the IP address right here set up right, which is this right here. And just make sure it doesn't conflict with any of your other peers that you have set up. Like if I did dot six here and dot six here, they'd conflict if they both tried to connect at the same time. Um, but anyways, I hope this was uh, helpful. Um, if you have problems, uh, comment. I'll try to help you. Um, but anyways, go ahead and like and subscribe and uh, have a good one.